All right, so I am continuing with the kill whitey phase. Trying to get rid of as much of the, the default white as possible and replace it with my own collection, kind of puzzle pieces of color. And I like to turn off my black and gray layer every once in a while and just clean up anything I missed. You know, it's easy to leave little blank areas like in this shadow of the suit. And we just want to fill that all in. Notice I'm starting with the big open patches of color. Now I want a, a pantsuit color. Maybe I'll steal it from here. Or maybe from here. So it's almost like kind of a greenish blue. Just a little bit different. Maybe a little lighter even than that. And remember I'm using the pressure sensitive brush at 100% opacity. And what that allows me to do is when I get into these little tight spots, I just don't press as hard. And I can be a lot more accurate. Now there are services where you can have an outside company colorize your black and white photos for you. And um, a colleague of mine wanted a photo colorized from his childhood. And he asked me to do it and I said I was, I was really busy at the moment, but I'd heard that there were some, some companies that could, could help. And then he researched the companies and what they asked for is exactly what we're doing here. They asked for you know, a high quality digital image of the black and white image. They wanted colorized and then they wanted any color reference you can give them, like other photos of the people in the, in the shots. You know, anything that would help them be able to make those subjective decisions. And then maybe the popular perception would be that a computer would do all of it somehow. But this is all very subjective. So no, they just, they have a low paid worker just do exactly what we're doing. And I say low paid just because how could you pay someone enough to do this on other people's photos? I don't know. But it cost um, $900 to have an 8x10 colorized from this service. So it's not a, a small service. And so that faculty member came back to me and said, how about you do it? <laughs> Doesn't matter how long it takes. And I did it. I used it as a class demo. And I don't know if I did a $900 worthy job. But he got what he paid for. Yeah, yeah. Cause people that just want to kind of practice their skills, want to contribute. I could see that. We live in a very, very generous culture, creatively. So I don't want you to worry about doing it perfectly. I want you to just have fun exploring the potential of completely replacing all color. All right, so I've got a nice little painting of his guitar, his handkerchief, his shirt. Now I need his bow tie and the rest of his guitar body. And the bow tie, let's see, I have some other reference. He's, he has a red bow tie there, red bandana there. Maybe red would be a good choice. Green is here, but I already, I already have enough blues and things going on. Let me steal it from here. So I open it with Photoshop. Then I, for this one, I'm just going to pull it out on its own. And try to float it so I can see the red and then use option and just steal it.
Okay, the problem is the red is a lot darker than the bright color or the bright uh, value white of this bow tie. But it would work well for some of those details in the bow tie. So here we have two local colors, right? We have the at least two. We have the colors of the pattern and then the colors of the background. So I'll steal another color, maybe this pale blue. And draw around. And if I want to make my brush a little smaller, I can do that. Maybe I want to do something else other than just that really pale, pale blue. Maybe this yellow. Maybe something a little brighter than that. So even though we're just doing the local colors, actually I can probably steal it from there. That does not make it easy. We're trying to pick the right local colors. These will be the foundation for all of our coloring that we end up doing. So the only place I'm going to leave the red is where I think the, the gray is dark enough to match that red. Which is only in those darkest spots. They just don't make uh, polka dot ties like they used to, pattern ties. So I get to be pretty creative with just this little detail, with the colors I choose. Now the only reason I'm being kind of careful with this is I want to get a, an accurate idea of what it will look like. With these color choices. That will help inform other colors I might use. I think I'll need at least one more color choice. I can steal colors for myself, steal that shirt color, collar. I'm trying to get rid of all that arbitrary white.
Yeah, I think that will kind of work. Maybe throw some green in there later. Okay, now, what are the big areas? I still have a lot of white. So here's one trick. I can make a new layer, kind of like this used yellow. One way before we finish today, we have about 20 more minutes of today's class. We want to try to fill up as much of the white as possible. I can make a new layer between my flat local color and the paper white, and I'm just going to fill the whole thing, edit fill, with a color that I think works for the background. And I can select it from here if I like. But I go to um, edit fill, and then I select color. And that should allow me to pick the color. but I can always change it. So let's say I'll pick that color. Okay, fills it all in. See, it makes a big difference all of a sudden. You don't do that to begin with because it will affect your color choices otherwise. But I fill it all in and then I can adjust it. So if I don't want that color, well, let's try something like this, more very neutral color. Use the paint bucket, replace that. That might not look like much, but it's no longer white. And to show you the difference that that has, if I now go to my flat local color and I paint with white up in that far corner, that's what I was talking about. Even your whites have to be painted in. Then that's going to show up much more powerfully. Like his button on his shirt is reflecting white. He can make his teeth perfectly white, you know, as much as possible. The whites of his eyes. The silver in his hair. You know, those show up. The white of his lapel. His shirt front. That kind of thing. But let's play with this background color. This is what I like to do now. Now that I have some of the colors established, I'm kind of setting the lighting. I take that, that background color, and I'm going to play with its hue, not its saturation. Well, I could play with its saturation too, but its hue. So do I want it on the cool side? Do I want it on the warm side? How saturated do I want it to be? I'm not trying to hide from color. So I kind of like that. So this color, right? And that, that might help to start tie together some of my choices. Now the problem with it is you want to be on the right layer, right? So now I'm going to merge these two together. Select them both, Command E. Now they're all on one layer. And sure enough, now I have killed most of Whitey. And now I am carefully putting some back. Only where I want it. 